Hello and welcome to Mentoring the Mentors, an institute that accelerates your learning curve. My dear educators, let's talk about life skills, education, different methods and strategies to inculcate life skills in our students. Till now, we have talked about meaning, need, importance of life skills. Also, we have discussed 10 core life skills given to us by WHO, that is World Health Organization. So if we want to start with the various skills that we can inculcate in our students, let's first begin with the communication skills. Communication skills is one of the 21st century skills we want to enhance in our students so that they'll be able to communicate effectively, not only through words, but all also through their gestures, their body language, and the facial expression. So for that, we need to organize role plays, debates, presentations in our classes so that students, they'll be able to get such kind of platform where they'll be able to exhibit their communication skills. They would be very effective in their communication skills, both verbal as well as non-verbal. So we need to focus on their facial expression, their active body language, and many more uh, activities as well. So my dear educators, if uh, we just have a look at the key points that we have discussed, we need to organize role plays, debates, discussions, presentation. We need to focus on the body language, expression, and the gestures of our children. Now, if we talk about about, uh, inculcation of decision making and the problem solving skills. We need to teach our students a systematic approach to decision making, what is right, what is wrong, what is beauty, what is truth in anything that they are uh, coming across in the world, in the surrounding, in the neighborhood. So let them identify various options, let them gather information, evaluate the pros and cons of each and every option, and then they'll be able to make informed choices, that they'll be able to take right decisions. Now, if I talk about problem solving, let them brainstorm and break the complex problem into smaller parts. This breaking down of the main problem into the smaller parts is known as computational thinking. Computational thinking, yes. When we divide a bigger problem into the small parts, then they'll be able to focus on each part. They'll be able to analyze and take the steps accordingly. This is absolutely like having a vision or the goal in our life and then dividing the same into different different milestones like we have got a long-term goals and then we have got short-term goals and then we uh, just focus on our immediate steps on daily basis what we have to do in order to achieve that short-term and the long-term goals so it is like we need to teach the same and we need to ask them we need to give them some opportunities so that they'll be able to integrate their learning with the real life so what we have to do, we need to organize brainstorming sessions, we need to foster computational thinking, we need to integrate the teaching with the real world, and also we need to enhance the evaluation skills where the students, they'll be able to focus on pros and cons of each uh, of their decision, and then they will be able to make informed choices and also let them come up with the creative thinking and they should be always ready with some alternative solutions to the given problem because every problem can have multiple solutions. Now if I talk about creative critical and the creative thinking. We need to teach our students to analyze the given information, evaluate arguments and think critically. For that the best option is let them participate in debates, discussion, and analyzing in the real world issues. If we talk about creative thinking, that is thinking out of the box. So let them participate in brainstorming sessions. We can provide them some creative projects and different activities in order to foster their imagination skills and originality as well, right? So let them come up with a number of innovative ideas. So here are the key points. We can have thinking classrooms in our classes. Give them some situations, some statements, right? They can ponder over, they can think about it, and they can come up with innovative suggestions and solutions. Also, they can have different questions also that they can design based on the given situation. Let them take part in debates and discussions and let them integrate their learning with the real life. For that, let them brainstorm together. Think about what all is happening in the world around us. Also, let's encourage them through different activities that foster imagination. So my dear educators, in order to enhance the emotional recognition and regulation, empathy and relationship building, 
what we have to do is we need to help our students so that they will be able to take part in journal writing, mindfulness exercises, and guided reflection activities. For that, we need to promote cooperative learning activities. You know, you see in cooperative learning activities, each individual in a group has been given a specific task and the child, the individual in the group, the group member takes the onus of the given task and com uh, accomplishes the same in order to get the success of the group on all, all together. So my dear educators, we can provide them some community service experiences also where the children, they will be able to talk to the community members and they can develop empathy. They can put themselves in others' shoes as well. So my dear educators, if we sum up for emotional intelligence and self-awareness, we can provide these opportunities to our students. They can participate in journal writing. Mindfulness activities can be conducted. Cooperative learning strategies can be used in the classes. Now, I have discussed on my platform in detail what are the different cooperative learning strategies. Because you are preparing for your life skills exam. So here you need to list only these points. The teachers who want to know more about cooperative learning strategies can check the description box. I'll be sharing the link over there. And let them participate in a reflective learning. When we talk about reflective learning, we talk about metacognition, thinking about thinking. Let them reflect on what they have done whether it is right, whether it is wrong, so that they'll be able to take or make informed choices in future. So give them opportunities to participate in community service as well through SUPW or SEVA projects, as we all have been doing in our classes as guided by CBSE. So my dear educators, next, uh, if we want to foster such kinds of activities where the children, they'll be able to manage the stress and they'll be able to exhibit resilience. What we need to do is we need to provide some stress management techniques, including relaxation exercises. Let them manage uh, their tasks according to the time available to them, like time management strategies and healthy coping strategies. And this, by educating our students in this manner, we will be able to work on releasing their stress and they will be able to have a very good mental and physical well-being. So we need to help our students develop resilience by promoting growth mind mindset. Let them highlight the personal strengths and foster optimism in the face of challenges. Everybody has to face different challenges in life, but many a times, we get stressed because every everyone is, you know is not perfect. So long on some fun koi nahi hota. Har ek mein kami hoti hai. But at least if we focus on our strength, what strengths do we have? And accordingly, if we step forward, we will be able to make wonders in our life. So my dear educators, if we summarize for managing stress, we can have some relaxation exercises. We can ask our students to manage their schedule their timings their work their tasks according to the time available that is time management strategies what is urgent what is important what is urgent and important and what are the tasks that are neither important nor urgent and still the students they are wasting their time by indulging their precious time like by indulging themselves in this that kind of activities we can have growth mindset activities and also KYS, know yourself. Let our students know themselves. Let them know about their strengths and accordingly they can do wonders. We can also have some healthy coping strategies for them so that they should know how to cope with stress, how to face the challenges of life. And apart from it, we can have goal setting and planning strategies as well. You know, our students, they have to plan their various strategies, the various plans for their life. Maybe when they are in 10th standard, they think about what all subjects they'll be opting in 11th standard. They'll be going, they'll be opting a particular stream or maybe a combination of the streams as per NEP now. The streams, the subjects, they are not divided in silos. So we need to ask them, we need to guide and mentor them to make informed choices to make stick smart goals now for uh understanding what are smart goals let us know s stands for specific m for measurable a for attainable r for realistic and t for time bound let them 
make the informed choices accordingly and set their goals accordingly. We can guide them in creating the action plans and breaking down the goals into manageable steps. We can provide opportunities for goal tracking and reflection to enhance motivation and accountability. If I sum up for the SMART goals, first we have to help them, mentor them, guide them to set their goals and the goals should be SMART and they should be tracking their goals also. Like by when they will be able to achieve their goal. They will be able to track the different milestones that they are achieving in order to achieve their bigger goals, their life, uh, larger goals, long-term goals of their life. And also we need to motivate them like, yes, they are making informed choices. They are on the right path. Also, they have to be accountable for whatever the decisions that they have taken in their life. Because later, they should not be repenting on their decision. So they should be able to face the challenges of life. Yes, this is my decision and I am accountable for it. Right? So my dear educators, if I talk about the collaborative projects, in order to enhance the collaboration skills, that is 21st century skills, we need to engage the students in group projects and different activities that require cooperation, communication, and shared decision making. We need to encourage them to develop skills as active listening, compromising, valuing diverse perspectives. You know about cooperation, you know about communication, different decision making. And if you talk about active listening, I just would like to give you an instance over here, like active listening. Now, what is active listening for that? Uh, just uh, before that, I would like to sum up these keywords, active listening, compromising, diverse perspective, cooperation, and shared decision. They need to actively listen to the other's perspective. They need to know compromising compromising is sometimes it's not like that every time what decision suppose i am taking that is always right they should be able to understand the other's perspective that is valuing the diverse perspective and accordingly make informed choices cooperate and there should be a shared decision let's agree to disagree sometimes we need to go ahead with that also ye nahi ki jo decision maine liya hai wohi bilkul sahi hai hum dusre ke perspective ko yaar nahi samajhte ye cheeze nahi honi chahiye aur dusre ki baat ko bahut acche se sunna chahiye that is active listening so for active listening would like to share with you a technique that is slant technique Slant, S stands for sit up in your seat, means when you are listening to someone, you have to be attentive. You need to lean forward, means you are paying attention and ask questions and means you are activating your thinking as well. When you are asking questions, yes, I know it. You are relating the same with your previous knowledge. And also N is nod your head. Nod your head means you are naming key information also. Yes, yes, agree. Maybe you are able to relate the same with that. You are listening listening to that particular person that is a kind of non-verbal communication also you need to track the talker or the speaker as well so that you will be able to understand what the speaker is conveying to you so this is the active listening or the slant technique and if i go ahead with another kind of skills here it is financial literacy we need to ask our students we need to provide such kinds of platform where they'll be able to know and understand budgeting, money management, how to create a budget, and they should be able to understand income, expenses, financial planning. So we can have some games or simulations so the students will be able to understand such important facts. For financial literacy, let them be aware of what is income, what is expenditure, how we can create home budget, what is the importance of saving and how they can contribute in saving through various simulations and games. So experiential learning uh, activities can be organized. Let them participate in role playing, simulations, case studies, community service projects so that they will be able to make connections very visible and clear between theory and practice. So we have been teaching our students through experiential learning. In this last slide, we talked about financial literacy. And you know very well, CBS has already started with various skill courses in order to enhance experiential learning financial literacy and many more so 
if I talk about cooperative learning, as I've already shared with you, in cooperative learning, each and every individual, each and every member of the group takes the onus of the assigned task. So we need to organize various group activities and projects so that we can enhance our students' communication, problem solving, and conflict resolution. We can assign different roles and responsibility within the groups. If there are five members in the group, each and every member has been assigned a specific task. This is how we are focusing and fostering cooperative learning and we need to promote accountability and effective teamwork. जब एक ग्रुप में उसके पांच मेंबर हैं, छह मेंबर हैं, हर एक मेंबर को एक पर्टिकुलर रोल या टास्क साइन किया गया है हर एक मेंबर उस काम को वर्क को अच्छे तरीके से कर रहा है उसकी अकाउंटेबिलिटी ले रहा है एंड ओवरऑल द टीम वर्क इज बीइंग प्रेजेंटेड सो दिस इज हाउ इट आवर फोकस इज इफेक्टिव टीम वर्क एंड अकाउंटेबिलिटी राइट एंड दिस इज वेरी मच पॉसिबल थ्रू कोऑपरेटिव लर्निंग लेट दम मेक कनेक्शंस विद द रियल लाइफ like our students they see the relevance and the application of the skills in their daily life for that we can either invite the guest speakers from relevant professions or the community organizations so that they can even get a chance to relate the same with the real life suppose we would like to talk about financial literacy we can invite someone like maybe the parents of our school the stakeholders those who are working in a bank when we are talking about quality we can ask someone who is working in a quality management in any kind of factory or any organization so this is how we can invite certain guest speakers from the relevant organization so that children will be able to connect their learning with the real life role modeling teachers they are the great role models for the students they have been imitated by the students students uh, whatever they see in their teachers they would like to model them so what we have to do is we need to model that desired life skill behavior and attitudes as a teacher as mentor as a guide as instructor so students they learn by observing and imitating they always say values they are caught they are never taught so be positive role model in demonstrating effective communication problem solving empathy and other life skills guidance practice and feedback we need to provide guidance practice different kinds of uh, feedback opportunities where children they'll be able to make changes as required in the task in the behavior that they are exhibiting for that we need to offer constructive feedback and guidance to our students so that they can refine their skills and they'll be able to focus on the areas of improvement we also should encourage self reflection self assessment so that students will be able to evaluate their own progress and set personal goals for growth when the children they'll be able to map their own learning like on the ladder of the success which step they are lying in now at present and they'll be able to see how much they have to do how much they have to move forward and in what way they need to move forward what they have to do how they have to do in order to achieve their goal that is real learning so my dear educators we need to integrate life skills into curriculum already cbsc has provided life skills uh, well being courses also that we have started teaching to our students but in order to inculcate these kinds of life skills along with teaching life skills as a separate subject what we need to do is we need to integrate these life skills while teaching the various disciplines in our classes for example we can enhance our students communication skills while uh, teaching language arts in any language english hindi punjabi kannada telugu tamil whatever regional languages we are teaching to our students or maybe national or international languages while teaching those languages let the students know uh, how to communicate effectively so then they'll be able to communicate well with others as well so likewise decision making skills can be enhanced through mathematics when the students they have to decide which formula they have to use right by doing this these are the different steps if they'll be doing solving the sum through these steps what will be the answer how they have to go ahead with that what is right what is wrong and also team work in physical education likewise different kinds of activities can be done so that we will be able to integrate subject knowledge along with the life skills so the same can be done and apart from it let's talk about technology and media we need to use 
video clips, online interactive activities, and educational applications that are different apps are available so that we can teach our students about responsible and ethical use of technology, digital citizenship, critical evaluation. So uh, if I talk about there is a mass media or media literacy skill uh, course that is also started by CBSE. There is a course on digital citizenship too. There is a course on uh, using technology wisely, right? Talking about AI, like information technology. So such skill-based courses, they can be used in the classes so that we can integrate teaching along with the life skills. Uh, along with this, parents and community partnership that should be there. Engage the partners, parents, community in supporting the life skills development. We need to share the information with the parents about the skills that are being taught in the school and we need to provide the suggestions accordingly so that what all life skills we are trying to inculcate in the school, the same can be reinforced at home also. We need to collaborate with various community organizations and businesses to provide authentic learning experiences and mentorship opportunities for the students. Jo hum school mein life skills inculcate karne ki koshish kar rahe hain, uske baare mein parents ko aware karana, uske baare mein information share karna bahut zaruri hai, taki jo cheeze hum school mein kar rahe hain, parent partnership ke dwara same thing in ghar par bhi reinforce ho sake. Cross age teaching also can be done where even this is also called peer tutoring as well. We need to promote cross age teaching where older students mentor and teach the younger students the specific skills. This not only helps the older students reinforce their skills but also enhance leadership, communication, empathy in both the mentors as well as the mentees. We need to invite the guest speakers in our schools the guest uh, speakers, they can focus on the specific life skills. They can share their insights, their own experiences. And uh, this provides students with a real world perspective and inspires them to develop those skills. When they see the role models ke through, guest speakers, they talk about what life skills they are talking about, how they have learned, how they have faced challenges, and how they are growing in life. Mein aage badh rahe so then they will be able to integrate their learning with the real world and they can also say yes this is possible these are smart goals Aisa kuch nahi hai ki out of the world hum baat kar rahe hai, jo possible nahi ho sakti hai. so this is very important and we can also organize field trips to the relevant places maybe the workplaces cultural organizations community organizations where students they can observe and interact with the individuals who exemplify specific life skills so is tarike ke field trips bhi hum organize kar sakte hain apne students ke and gamification take a online platform per during covid we have already taught our students through online platform now this online gaming or maybe offline gaming different board games can also be done agar bahut zyada aapko lagta hai ki digital media bahut zyada use ho raha hai to at least usko balance banane ke liye you can go ahead with some online or offline games where the students they'll be able to utilize and practice life skills to achieve the specific objectives of unko rewards points levels of any achievement milte hain so that motivates the students and create a sense of accomplishment agar hum simple ek snake and ladder ya ludo ki game ki baat kare jab hum chote hote bhi khela karte the snake and ladder mein what kind of uh, you see rewards and achievements we are getting kya hame milta hai kaise hota hai ya small business games hoti hain bachcho board game uske through bhi they'll be able to uh, make or take informed choices chess ki game hai ya aur bhi bahut sari games hai jisme unko pata chalta hai ki kaun sa decision maine lena hai kis decision se kya ho sakta hai and they are uh, able to take the accountability also for their decisions so my dear educators so life skills teaching life skills is an ongoing process ye nahi ki aaj padha diya aur shayad hamesha ke liye ho gaya zindagi bhar shuru se leke ant tak i mean the entire life we keep on learning life skills this is ongoing process and uh, that requires patience reinforcement and consistent practice by incorporating these strategies educators can create a supportive and engaging learning environment that facilitates the development and application of the essential life skills so my dear educators stay tuned to mentoring the mentors and don't forget to like subscribe and share your valuable feedback also in the comment section below. So stay tuned to Mentoring the Mentor. Soon I'll be sharing more about life skills and any other different topics related to MED or maybe your teaching learning process also that can be made effective through wonderful teaching strategies. So bye-bye. Have a nice day.